Welcome to We Drink and We Farm Things. This is the farm comedy podcast that is an adult happy hour for the farming community. We drink adult beverages, talk about the ups and downs of farming things, and give zero clucks about not having the perfect farm life. We keep it real with you and share the mistakes we've made and what we've learned so you can feel less alone in this farm thing. We drink things, oh, we farm hey there, things, Sam. we drink and oh, farm hey there, Bev. What do you have in that cute cup this morning? What does your cup say? Oh, it's your name. It's my name. <laughs> oh, how pretty. <laughs> I know. My best friend from Phoenix sent it to me for Christmas. And I was like, oh. I'm going to use this cup on the podcast because it has my name on it. <laughs> it looks like almost like the Barbie handwriting. It does kind of, doesn't it? I love it. And it's pink. Yeah. yeah. So what's um, in it? I made myself a dirty chai. So it is essentially um, chai tea. Well, it, that's redundant. Chai means tea. Um, so it's chai. Does it? Yeah, it does. I didn't know that. Yeah. Tea tea. Tea tea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I put a double shot of espresso in it. And then I warmed some milk with a little bit of sugar and just frothed it up a little bit and put it in. Um, but I think that my espresso machine needs cleaning because it, doesn't taste very good. And I'm thinking Uh that's what it is. Um, but also my espresso making just needs some work. You know, you've got to grind it, right. You've got to, you've got to tamp it right. And all of that. And I'm a little out of practice. So. Yeah, I would be too. I used to work at big B, but that was probably like over 10 years ago. Now (laughs) it feels like yesterday, but yeah, it's been a minute, but there is a method to that madness. Yeah, there is. And actually, since I've let it sit, it has gotten a little better. So maybe it's just oh, that good. the chai needed to finish seeping a little bit because felt a little watery when I first sipped okay. it. I was like, oh, I ruined it, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you drinking over there? So I made myself a strawberry smoothie and it's so good that I've been drinking it before we even recorded. That's um, amazing. <laughs> But I had leftover strawberries and I was like, what am I going to make for today? So I used strawberries, some milk, and then I had a we, uh, or we, uh, yogurt Mm. and it was maple flavored. So I was looking up like smoothie recipes and sometimes they say to add some maple syrup. So I was like, Uh this might be good. And surprise, surprise. It was really good. Um, I really like those yogurts. They're super tiny and they come in these fancy little glass containers. I wish they were a little bigger, but they're delicious. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) I like fancy yogurt too. I'm kind of a yogurt snob. (laughs) I'm becoming a yogurt snob in my older age. Yes. (laughs) Right. Um, so what do you do with all those glass jars afterwards? I've just been throwing them away because the lid is like the foil. Oh Um, yeah. But I feel like I might be able to use them as like seed starters. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Like the perfect little size. Um, I was thinking more for like an art project or some sort of like decorative, you know, like fill them with little beads or rocks or something. (laughs) Oh yeah. I (laughs) think flowers um, in them. One of my personal, uh, goals for this year, not necessarily farm related, but it kind of could be is to declutter. Mm. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that art project would help me meet that goal. Nope. But maybe I should think of like something creative to do with them. It might be kind of tough with seedlings because it's kind of like a little bit of a, like a, smaller mouth than the base of the jar mm-hmm. so it might be tough for seedlings but I'd probably do something yeah I'll think about it yeah. I'll let you guys know if I get creative in a way you that won't add clutter yeah right yeah no no I run into it all the time I'm like I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna use it and then Jared's like we have a gazillion jars that don't have any lids to them. (laughs) Like what on earth are you going to do with these things? I'm like, I don't know. They're pretty and they make me happy. I'm keeping. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they might be really cool. Like centerpieces. If somebody has like a shower coming up, not like in the shower, but like a wedding shower Oh yeah, or like a wedding coming up and you need fun things for the centerpieces. I'm sure there's cool things like that that could be done with them. Yep. That totally makes sense. (laughs) 
Our drink peep this episode is our friend Kayla Wood, and she is at Honey Creek Homestead over on the Instagram. So cheers, lady. Cheers. All right. So I'm so excited. I'm about today. <laughs> excited to learn. I feel like this is also going to give everyone a peek into your brain. Oh yeah. Maybe a little scary. I don't know. Or it could be awesome. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> it's probably a little bit of both. I was just talking about this with my husband. Cause like my brain is just like always on makes sleep a little difficult these days. Um, probably just cause I'm so excited about so many things. Um, but yes, uh, I think that, so last year we did an episode on a garden journal and we used, um, a Panda planner for that garden journal. And I do feel like that method works really well for people who are better at consistency, if that makes sense, you know, cause everything's already like pre-boxed yeah. and pre-printed. And consistency is the thing that I'm still working on. I'm still working on developing my habits so that I'm actually showing up and doing the things that I say I want to do every day. <laughs> right. It's a work in progress for a lot of people. I think it is. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. I, I think so too. So I was thinking to myself, um, what style could you do a garden journal in that would be more conducive to that, um, like more free form, um, habit forming type of gardening style. Um, it can be a little messy, a little creative, um, and then also give you more flexibility so that you can make it whatever you want it to be. Cause that's the other thing too, is when you buy things that are pre-printed, you're stuck working within their framework, which yeah. may or may not work for your schedule in your brain and can be kind of frustrating. Cause you're like, I just bought this beautiful, like bound journal thing. And I just, right. I can't use I it. it. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't I feel like guilty. this one element. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's not enough space for the things you're telling me that I need to write out. Like, yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Exactly. So, um, I settled on bullet journaling for a garden journal this year. Ooh, ah. Ah. <laughs> um, and so one of the coolest things about a bullet journal is that it's a blank journal that you totally have all the power over, um, which makes it kind of a unique journaling style. Um, the, um, thing about it though, is that it does take a little bit of setup time, which I think can turn some people off. Um, but I'm going to share <laughs> a couple of things that you can do to like make it not so overwhelming. Um, and also just make it so that the setup it, it, you can make it what you want it to be. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You can be yeah. as detailed in your setup or as simple in your setup as you want it to be. Um, and bullet journals are actually called Bujo for short, which totally makes me oh. gag. <laughs> oh, it does kind of sound like Spooge. Yeah. Well, it just, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the word, like, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not part of the generation that shortens everything. I don't think everything yeah. needs a nickname or an acronym. Like I feel like bullet journal works just fine. <laughs> it's not that many more syllables. Yeah. It's yeah. really not Bujo bullet journal. Like, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. So when you're looking up some bullet journaling <laughs> methods, you can Google Bujo also, and you'll end up with some cool stuff perhaps as well. If after we're all done with this episode, you decide, oh, hey, I do need a bullet journal. Um, so the way that this journal works is it's actually just a plain dot grid notebook. Um, and let me see, I know I've got some blank pages in here still. So this is what a plain dot grid notebook looks like for the folks that are on YouTube, um, there will have pictures of this, um, inside of Instagram and maybe a couple of other places for those of you that are listening, um, on the podcast format, or you can just pop on over to YouTube and go check out the YouTube video for this one. Um, cause there will probably be some visuals of this bullet journal. So this yeah. journal shows up plain. Um, and this is one of our journals. Yay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's dots instead of lines in case that didn't pick up on YouTube. Cause I had a hard time seeing it, but oh, okay. I better post at it. 
Okay. Um, yeah. So this is great. Even if you just want to write things down too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I like about it. It's very flexible. Yeah, it is really flexible. And, um, what is also really nice about it is that you can, um, really make it your own in the sense that if you want to be really artistic and use it as like a meditative part of your day, you can do that. Um, cause if you look at pictures of bullet journals on the internet, you're going to see them full of calligraphy and gorgeous colors and highlighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's, um, habit trackers that are like hand drawn, like mandalas and stuff like that. So you can, if you're artistic in that way, you can really, you know, make this something really like pretty and special every year if you want to. Um, but you definitely don't have to do that. And in fact, when I started this, it had zero color in it whatsoever. Um, but then I bought a package of sparkly gel pens oh, <laughs> and went goodness. to town. <laughs> And so now it's incredibly artistic, um, like as far as I can get to be artsy, um, hand drawing isn't necessarily one of my strong suits, but I enjoy it. So at that point, I'm just like, who cares if everybody else thinks it looks like a child drew it, it makes me happy. So <laughs> yes, that's the point <laughs> it is. So today in this episode, um, I'm going to walk you through, uh, how I set this journal up specifically for gardening. Um, because I love pen and paper and just having something to carry around and touch and feel, um, you can totally use this in, uh, in tangent with a digital method. If you usually use digital methods to do your garden, um, or you can even start a simple bullet journal just to give yourself, um, space for like garden muses and, um, you know, drawing and things like that when you're in your garden. So you can totally do all your planning in a digital space and then use this as the place where your brain gets to just get creative and kind of dump all of its ideas out into and whatnot. So um, the supplies that you'll need to start a gardening bullet journal is a blank dot grid notebook. And we're biased, but we think you should buy one of the ones from our shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we have what, like three or four designs now. Yeah, I think so. We've got this one. Um, and we have the drink farm give zero clocks. It's black. Um, and I have that one also. Um, and then we did two versions of the joy farmer one as well. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've so got four options. currently. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and if these are really popular, we can always design some more. So um, if anybody right. has any ideas, feel free to share them with us. <laughs> um, you also need to have a pen. Um, I like to use one regular ink pen, um, and you can also use your slew of colored erasable pens from last year's garden planning. Um, but I also have a really fun package of those sparkly gel pens, um, and there's some metallic colors and some neon colors and stuff. Um, and they really help with getting artsy. Um, but they are permanent. Um, but for that, uh, I also recommend having some whiteout on hand. I just, I throw this in my package that has all my pens because I find myself, I'll start something and I'm like, oh wait, I put that on the wrong line. And I'm like, oh well, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> White out for the win. White out for the win. Um, I also numbered my pages wrong on accident. And then I was like, it's my bullet journal. Who cares if I have 81 in here twice? Uh, something else that you'll probably want is some sort of straight edge because um, you need something for drawing straight lines. Um, if you're going to plan your garden beds in it um, or draw a master garden plan, which is um, in here in my garden journal. Um, and I actually just bought this. I haven't taken it out of the package yet, um, but it's a pocket ruler. It's six inches long and it has this cool little clip on the top. Um, so that you can clip it Ooh. inside your journal. Yeah. So that way you don't lose it. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, it's like $3 on Amazon. So there'll be a link in the show notes to this. Um, I also, um, so that's really it. That's all that you have to have to start your bullet journal. You don't, you don't need anything super fancy. Um, but I did, um, add on to mine and bought a package of, um, these are pastel highlighters. I like the pastel colors because they just 
speak to my artistic brain a little more than the neon ones do. <laughs> less aggressive. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're definitely less aggressive. Yeah. Um, and then I also <laughs> bought um, a package of washi tape. Um, I actually have 16 different um, patterns of the What's washi, washi tape? tape. So this is tape that has like really pretty pictures on them. You can see that they're oh, like plants and flowers yeah. and stuff and some shapes. Um, I've got 16 different ones and we'll actually, we'll link to this specific package in the show notes. Cause I think it was like 12 or 15 bucks for all of them. Um, it's not super sticky tape, not really for like taping things, um, but it's more decorative. So it okay. sticks to the paper. You can peel it off if you need to. Um, and the thing that I use my washi tape for is to create tabs in my bullet journal so that I could flip to different sections really easily. Um, so that's what I bought mine for, but you can also use it to like separate spots on the paper. You know, if you wanted to like chop a piece of paper in half and do it decoratively, um, that would be a great way to do it. Or you can use it to create your garden bed shapes in your, Ooh. um, in your planner, or you can use it to like mark your paths. I mean, there's all sorts of different things. Um, and that's one of the really cool things about um, the bullet journal is that you get to create your key essentially, or your keys for all of your different sections. So you can decide like what everything means by color, you know, or highlight color or shape or, mm -hmm. you know, pattern of tape or whatever. So to set a bullet journal up for your garden, um, you'll need about 30 minutes to get started. That was how long it took me. Um, so I recommend you do it with a cup of coffee or a drink in hand and consider it a little bit of garden meditation time. Um, but that can always be cut down depending on how many sections you want to put in yours. I put a lot of sections in my bullet journal because as mm -hmm. I started writing them out, I just thought of other things I'd like to track in here. So, um, the first thing that you'll do is you'll number all of your pages and you will number them down in the bottom corner. Um, and you know, one, two, three, all the way to 140. That's how many pages are in this particular version of a dot grid notebook. Um, and then you will create an index and I will show you my index here on the YouTube. So the index is basically the, um, is where you're going to write out all of the different sections that you're gonna have in your bullet journal. So the sections in my journal include seed inventory, seed starting dates for zone six, transplanting dates for zone six, my master garden map, my garden bed planner, garden dreams, which is like my wish list for things I'd love to do to the garden someday. I have a garden to-do list. So things that need to get done in the garden. Um, garden activity log and observations. So that'll just be like, I actually, I have one in there already because let's see, that's page 61. I went out into the greenhouse and I had slugs. Oh, so no. on the date, I just wrote a little you know, blurb about how I found slugs in the greenhouse and I highlighted slugs and then I highlighted what I think I need to do to take care of it. So that way, when I'm going back and referencing this later, I'm like, what kind of pests did I run into in my gardening activity, log and observations and be like, oh, slugs. And this is how I think I needed to do it or aphids or whatever, you know, whatever other observations came about throughout the year. Um, and then I also added a harvest log, a seed saving log, a food preservation log, and a section for garden music, garden musings. So like just thoughts that I have while I'm sitting outside in the garden. <laughs> Maybe I'll I write some poems. I was hoping it was music. <laughs> I hope it was music. So you could like, which songs do my tomatoes like? <laughs> oh, there we go. You could totally track that in a garden journal. Oh my gosh. Um, and then um, after I was all done. So one of the things that you'll want to do when you write your index is you want to leave space in there so that you can squeeze in other things that you think of mm. that you're inspired by as you add in things. And I had done that. These were originally all spaced by like three and then I kept adding more stuff in. Um, but down at the bottom, I added a seedling start log so that I could keep track of when I started specific seedlings. Um, and then I also added a section for uh, my seed ordering list for 2022 so that I know what I ordered and when. 
Um, and right now, the thing that I am doing the most in this garden journal is I am putting in my seed inventory. And I actually just finished all of my vegetables last night. I have to do all my flowers. Um, but I put on every seed packet I have. I added a note for whether it was old or low in stock so that I knew if I Ooh. wanted it, I might need to think about ordering it if I had poor germination rates. Um, and then when I go to start my seedlings, I know exactly what kind of kale and, you know, like what kind of radishes, what kind of onions and stuff I have on hand. Um, and once I was all done with that, I actually, let's see, there it is on my seed ordering list. I made my wish list for my seeds that I wanted to order and I went ahead and got those ordered. Uh, Hooray. <laughs> yeah. So now I know what I ordered this year and I had to cross them off because I had some that I wanted, but they just weren't available anymore. So I just mm. put a line through it. So that way I knew that variety wasn't available anymore for whatever reason. And I just picked something else. Um, and then that's what I did. Um, one of the things that you can do after you're done creating your index is you can decide um, where you want to put everything. So I did my best to give a few pages for every section, unless it was something that I thought was going to be a really big section. So like my seed starting dates for zone six, I knew I only needed a handful of pages for that. So I just, you know, did four pages so that I had a little bit of room to add you know, blank things or notes if I needed to. Same with transplanting dates. Um, but like my harvest log, I gave myself 10 pages for that because it was imagining, you know, like how often you go out there and harvest. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough room for that. But the cool thing about the bullet journal is once you run out of room down at the bottom on the last page, just write continued on page, whatever, and skip oh. ahead to the end, and then you can add it. And then on the front in your index, you just add harvest list continued, you know, such and such page, and then you're good to go. So the book really nice. gives you a lot of flexibility. Yes. So when you decide um, where you want to put your sections and how many pages you want to give them, you can just write a little header up at the top. So like our index. Um, let's see, we'll flip to this one right here. Oh, that one I didn't write a header on yet. My garden bed planner. So yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. planned any garden beds yet, but I have the header. So I know that that's what that section is. Um, my garden dreaming. See, these pages are a little more plain because I haven't pulled out the, you know, the pretty pens and the markers and stuff for them. Um, but that's okay. I still think it's really functional. My to-do list. Yes. Um, so you can make your bullet journal as pretty or as plain as you want to do. Yeah. I, uh, attempted something like this last year. Um, but mine is not as pretty. <laughs> oh, but it's <laughs> but totally functional, it's right? Functional. Yeah. Yes. And the reason I did it like this without really considering dimensions or anything like that, um, the intent of this page is just to remind me. Mm -hmm. And for those of you not staring on Hulu, it's like the layout of my garden. So I remember what I planted where so I can rotate things because that yeah. was most important to me. And then I also kept my lessons learned in here and then my ideas. And I'm so glad that I did write it down because while my brain is pretty good at remembering things, um, it's nice to have a reference point <laughs> to yeah. go back to in case I do forget one or two things. So, um, I only used four pages last year, so I have a bunch left. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I might just save those. Maybe I'll get some of that fun tape mm -hmm. and then do kind of the same amount of effort in this. And then I have the same one for years and years and years. That's a great um, idea. Cause I do the digital thing too. And maybe once I revisit that, cause I need to start thinking about like inventory and stuff. I know I have way too many seeds. So <laughs> my thing is not ordering more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I ran into too. The only thing I've ordered so far is kale, Swiss chard and mm -hmm. radishes because I was really yeah. low on those and those seeds were super old. So I'm not expecting yeah. good germination rates. <laughs> right. For sure. So what I might do then too, once I won't promise the timeline on this, but once, um, I go back through and update my Excel type template for how I track digitally, Maybe that's something else we can share too, 
for you all. If your brain maybe works a little differently and you like digital and writing down, I mm-hmm. do like having the writing down part out in the garden, but my brain likes digital for the planning part. Yeah. So, um, I might get a little more fun this year with my colors and stuff though. Cause you inspired some, <laughs> some creativity, but a lot of the times if I'm sitting in meetings and stuff and I need to like, we'll call it meditating, but it's really just yeah. getting out some rage on energy. It's really just like scribbling on a page, like a yeah. kid in a horror movie. Um, but I can do that colorfully. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you totally <laughs> can. Funny. Yeah. Well, but I like the idea of tracking pests too. Cause I didn't mm-hmm. think of that. Yeah. And if you have more than one. Like I was lucky. It was really just the squash borers last year, but if I come up against more than one, it would be nice to have that in one spot. Yeah. Um, I get three every year that hit really heavy. The squash was the squash vine borers, um, the squash bugs, and then mm. the aphids, those are the three things Ugh. that I end up getting every year. So and now, now slugs and now slugs. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not used to have slugs. I'm, I'm not really sure where the slugs came from. That's I'd, so weird. I'd find like a handful <laughs> in the strawberry patch. Um, yeah. but yeah, I even found one in my worm bin the other day. <laughs> And I was like, How'd oh, you he wanted a here? party with the worms. <laughs> well, um, and I was hesitant to do anything with it because it was like rolled up in a big ball. It looked like a squishy rock. And I was like, oh, is this how worms lay their eggs? I was like Googling. I was like, <laughs> like I have never seen anything like this before. Yeah. So I just pulled it out and dropped it in a glass jar. And I was like, well, I'll investigate this and look later. And then as it was sitting on my desk, it unrolled and it's antenna. Like uh, I was like, Oh, you're a slug. <laughs> maybe that's what I could use my wee jars for. Yeah. <laughs> slug <laughs> just trapping. Put, like just put something over top of it. Like a uh, foil with some holes in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, One of the things too, that I added to my journal that I thought I would show you guys is, um, my last and first frost dates for 2022. So that way, when I go back, when I do 2023's log, I can look at that and I can adjust my dates, you know, according to what I'm seeing as patterns and whatnot, Mm -hmm. um, in our actual space. And I imagine every year it's going to be a little different, um, but it'll be, you know, fun to kind of track that. Um, and the last thing I really wanted to make sure that you saw, let me see where I put a key. Um, here we go down at the bottom. So this is my seed starting by zone dates. Um, I put a key down at the bottom so that I could just use some shorthand for start oh. indoors, direct. So, you know, greenhouse or outside mm-hmm. in the garden, I think is the other one. Oh no. Um, I did greenhouse and basement on this page. Um, and what's really cool is if you run out of space, um, like I did, you can continue your key. So now I have an O oh. for outside. So I know that that's the outside garden. Cause that's what I ran into. I was like, gee, I was like, G stands for garden or greenhouse. And I was like, well, let's use that for greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and now O is yeah. outside. <laughs> like it feels like there that makes sense go. to my brain. Um, so you get to make your keys, you know, like be whatever you want. And you can write down your shorthand so that you can use your space efficiently so that hopefully you can fit a whole year in one journal. Um, and I do have like, um, I haven't started it yet, but this is the spot where I'm going to put the seed starting and planting dates for the fall garden. So the fall okay. and spring garden will fit in here. Um, that way I don't have to have two notebooks for the year. Um, and I think yeah. that this is going to work easier for me than the Panda planner. Cause then I don't have to have four of them. I think by the end of the Ooh, season, yeah. this is going to be a little stained, <laughs> yeah. a little wet. Um, it might be a little torn up. Um, that's okay. but I think that that's totally okay. And also I stapled my seed starting dates from, um, almanac.com in the back. So even though I put a section in here, I stapled this in here in case there was anything I wanted to grow that I hadn't already planned on. So then if I'm Mm. like, Oh, this year I decide I'm going to do turnips, like, you know, I can flip in here and be like, Oh, this is when I do turnips, you know? So I think that that wraps it up. It's kind of a lot, um, but it's not as overwhelming as you think it is. I've been working on this for about a week and I've only Mm -hmm. dedicated maybe an hour and a half total to it. And I already have that much in it. So So much. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so it, it is, it's a lot. Um, and I use this as my no screen time, like before I go to bed. So oh, I'm like sitting at smart. the kitchen table and I feel like I'm being productive and I'm working on something that I want to do, but I'm not staring at that blue screen at night. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that makes you happy too. Mm -hmm. not looking through Facebook and, you know, seeing maybe getting triggered by something you see, whatever it is, right. Right. Before you go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's good. That I imagine it's a good way to either start your day or end your day or both. Yep. Um, I use it as both. Um, and right now I've still have seeds all over the kitchen table because I need to log my flowers. <laughs> so I'll do that this afternoon if I get around to it. If not, I'll just package them all up and put them in my <laughs> office so that <laughs> the family doesn't have to live with my seeds out for a whole nother weekend. <laughs> oh, I like it though. That's yeah. Funny. There are yeah. far worse things you could have scattered on the kitchen table. It's true. It's true. Like drugs. <laughs> yeah. That could be bad for everybody. Right. That's what I say to myself every time I hit check out on Baker Creek's website. It could, could be drugs. <laughs> Instead, it's food. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> One last thing with this. Um, I want to see everybody's bullet journals. Because yeah. we had some people, um, you teased that we were going to do this episode and some people were kind enough to go and buy our journals mm -hmm. that are on our website so they could listen and learn and then get started on there. So if you feel comfortable, um, please share what you did, especially if you did something really unique or funky or, I mean, we want to see them all, bottom yeah. line. but, um, I'll share my, mine in the group eventually when I get going on it, but we'd love to see yours in our group. We drink yep. and we farm things over on Facebook. Yeah. And if anybody has any questions about the sections or anything that I did to set mine up, I thought of doing a YouTube video separately that went through like each section and exactly what I was using them for. Uh -huh. um, but I'll only do that if people want me to. So if someone has more questions and wants me to do that, let me know. Cause we'll throw it up on our YouTube channel. Um, or I was yeah. looking for new things to put up there. And, um, I mean, I don't know. I just found this so fun. So, <laughs> yeah, I think going into this talk and I think I told you this before, my brain doesn't work that way. So I was just like, oh gosh, this sounds like it's going to be such a bear to do. Do I want to try? Cause I don't, I like to try new things but I do have a tendency to prejudge. Like that's my knee jerk reaction that I'm working on for a lot of things. Um, <laughs> but this sounds like it's flexible enough where it can go along with my brain style, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, at minimum, you can use it to just track the things that you always said you wanted to like yeah. harvest preservation, you know, and mm -hmm pests. Like you could use it yeah. to just do those three things. Um, and I bought in a busy enough and big enough garden, you could fill a whole book with those. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if I end up having to get a second one because it is 140 pages. So, um, yeah. but if I have to get a second one, no big deal. I'll just add it to it and write that it's garden journal number two for 2022 and keep adding. <laughs> You could zip time together. Yeah. Zip time together. <laughs> That's a key ring. The binding. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Key ring. <laughs> All right. So make sure you leave us a review if you haven't already. Um, these are over on Apple podcast, or you can call us and leave us a voicemail. We're also accepting that method in case Apple podcast is being kind of difficult for you uh, or you don't have an Apple product. Um, we read or listen to one review a week, and then we take all of those listeners names, put them in a hat and then draw a name out. And that person wants an exclusive coffee mug that is not and never will be in our shop. That's right. Yes. And we have a voicemail today. So now we're going to listen to this week's review. Cheers y'all. It is Chelsea calling from Michigan. Mm -hmm. I have already gave y'all a review on Apple Podcasts, and I feel horrible that no one's leaving y'all a review because <laughs> you guys absolutely 
rock, and I look forward to every single new episode. Y'all give such great information, uh, share lots of great drinks, and y'all are just a great time in general. So 10 out of 10, highly recommend. (laughs) And yeah, I'm sorry y'all ain't getting the reviews. (laughs) Thanks, Chelsea. Fortunately, I will say um, she did leave that back in November, like right when we cut off for the end of the year. And we did get a couple since then. So I Mm -hmm. feel like she just put it into the universe that we needed more reviews and then we got some. Right. But we we do like those. So continue to leave those now that we've picked up reading them or listening to them again now that we're in 2022. Yes. (laughs) So funny. (laughs) Thank you, Chelsea. All right, just a real quick housekeeping and announcement corner this time. Send us your can't yes. evens. You can post them in the Facebook group or you can email them to us at drinkenvironmentgmail.com. We put those in our mini sodes. We only release one mini soda a month, and they're all things that you guys just can't even about. We love talking about them and laughing about them. Mm-hmm. We share a couple of our own as well. Um, and you can also send us farm stories and whatnot also for those episodes. Yeah. So be sure and do that um, because those are your episodes. Yes. And make sure that you take a look at today's show notes. You're going to find links to articles we discussed, a survey where you can anonymously tell us how we're doing. And then also, of course, links to social media, our merch, all that fun stuff that Bev showed off on YouTube today. Yep. You can access by going to drinkandfarm.com slash 188. That is right. To get to the show notes, it's drinkandfarm.com slash 188. Um, there will be links to our journals and all of the supplies that I use for my bullet journaling in case anyone just wants to emulate exactly what I did. (laughs) All right. So until next time, drink, farm, and and give give zero zero clucks. clucks. (laughs) Bye now. Bye.